Hello, everyone. Welcome back for some more Let's Read Tsukihime. So, uh, things got a little crazy last time, to say the least. So, let's hope that things are gonna slowly fall back to normal after our uh, emotional turmoil there. Um, we're on the lookout for Ark because we gotta find her. She's our vampire gf so let's go and take a look to see where she's at so there's no one on the main street not arc would not even regular people this is the same as last night i don't have any way of finding her right now even though i want to see her so bad i don't have any means she even though she's in so much pain i can't help her at all damn it i'm so irritated it drives me nuts somehow i have to find her somehow or i can't move forward Oh, we're looking everywhere. Wow, we looked... Wow. I gasped painfully. Even though I ran all through the city, I don't see her. My body is exhausted, and I can't get enough air. I breathe harder. The scar in my chest throbs with my heartbeat. Until now, I've never hated this fragile body this much. I hungrily breathe in air. Can't find her. I won't find her just running around aimlessly like this. I struggle for breath. If I had any chance to f of finding her, it would be... Hmm. This is interesting. I'm gonna... I'm gonna pop a new save. Part of me thinks it'll be the same alley. Because, like... Right? Well, she's not going to feed. She's trying to run away from us. Right? Hmm. If she's trying to run away from us, the best way to do so would be maybe her room. We can go check out her room. Because she's not going to feed, right? When she was going to feed, it made no sense to go to her room. But this is different. I'll go to Arkwood's room. If Arkwood is as weak as Senpai says, she would have had to re return to her room to rest. That makes sense. I gasp for air. My legs, which ran as hard as they could, finally stop. Trying to catch my breath, I enter the apartment. I grab the doorknob. It isn't locked. Without hesitating, I turn it and open the door. Even though it wasn't locked, there's no one there. Arkwit, are you here? There's no response. Does she, like, never lock her door? There's no sign of her even having returned here. Damn, then she's still in town? I hit the wall. But letting it on the wall is not going to get Arkwit to come out. Where did you go? Where did you go, Arkwit? There really is a god. I want to ask him for help. Arkwit isn't here. But I can't just find her running around aimlessly. At this rate, I'll never, never see her again. No, I'm not done yet. I still haven't fulfilled my promise with Arkwid. The promise to help defeat the vampire. The promise to meet tonight so we can fight together. Promise. That's right. There's still our promise. Even if it's just one-sided. Yeah, even if it's just me. I'll fulfill our promise. Back to the park. I return to the park. Our promise still remains here. Our unfulfilled promise for tonight remains here. So, if I can't break this promise, and if she thinks it's important too, our good will come back here. I can only continue to believe in her and wait here. Time passes by. The clock ticks mechanically, recording the passing of each second. I feel like I'm drowning. My body doesn't want to wait a minute longer. Just sitting here waiting seems like the most... Uh, most in idiocy and I, I want to run off and search for her again. But my heart is calm. Even though my body urges me to hurry, my heart remains calm. I continue waiting, staring up at the moon. It's horribly quiet. No sounds, as if the night froze everything. 
quiet stillness, as if Arkwit and I were the only ones in the entire world. I can stay in such a place, and it isn't painful at all to wait for any amount of time. So right now, I'm drowning in bliss. Only time passes by. Just two hours until dawn. If the day breaks, Arquid and I will probably never see each other again. And time just passes by. And then, like a white rabbit in the snow, she unexpectedly arrives in the park. Arquid doesn't say anything. With downcast eyes, she doesn't make a move to come closer. Arquid, I call out to her. She doesn't respond or even look in my direction. I can't speak. I don't know what to say to make her smile again. Right now, I feel like any words coming out of my mouth will only make her sadder. Time seems to stretch to eternity. In reality, the ticking of the clock can't have happened even close to a thousand times. Arkwid lifts her head, looking like she's watching a dream. You wouldn't go home at all, Shiki. So I came here because I couldn't leave you alone. Even though I really was thinking of going back to my room. She hesitates as she speaks, but she says this in her usual cheerful manner. Well, I said that wrong then. Of course I wouldn't go back. Didn't I say I would keep my promise? I still haven't been any help tonight. That's enough. You don't have to do that anymore. Enough? Well, just what's enough, Arquid? Doesn't it go without saying? It's just that I'm a vampire and you're a human, Shiki. I don't have any right to receive help from you. I did understand that earlier, and I would have ruined you if I went a bit further. That's why... It's enough, she whispers. What are you saying all of a sudden? I was ready for that from the time I agreed to help you. I understood far better than you that you were a vampire. Knowing that, I said I'd still help you. This is nothing I can agree with. Arquid, you don't need to worry about what happened earlier. You were just tired and weak. I'm an idiot, so I couldn't realize your lie. You weren't in pain because of your wounds, but because of your vampiric impulses, right? Senpai told me all about it. That woman. Since when did agents from the burial agency become so talkative? Less with hate and more with exhaustion, Arkwood gives a deep sigh. I heard it all from Senpai, so I'll be direct. I don't see any problem, Arkwood. You're in pain now, but you'll return to normal in a few days, right? So you don't need to worry. And about before, even though you were in so much pain, you held yourself back, didn't you? So it's alright. Let's just continue on like we were until now. With some difficulty, Arkwood smiles weakly. Shaky, you don't understand at all. It's useless to do this. Even now, I want to drink your blood. But you only think that. Then try hard to resist it. Haven't you tried so hard like that until now? That's true. Until now, I've held myself back. No, I was able to. But I guess it's useless now. Even though the only meaning for my existence is to hunt other vampires, I did a lot of extra things. I didn't know anything. I never would have thought of wanting anything. If I didn't rely on you and pursue the enemy by myself, it would have been alright. It would have been okay if she was by herself? Is she serious? Does she seriously believe that? With such a sad face? With such a sad voice? With such a solitary appearance and on the verge of collapse? That just pisses me off. Snap out of it, you idiot. What? Don't be ridiculous. What do you mean if you pursued the enemy by yourself, you would have been alright? Because it was impossible by yourself. Because you finally realized there are things you can't do yourself. You asked me for help, right? Then rely on me until the very end. I'll help you. No matter what happens, I'll help you, so... Don't look like that. Don't say those things. Finally. If you finally realize that life is fun... Please don't simply give up on happiness. Well, that's deep, man. Shiki, are you crying? I literally instinctively wiped under my eye after that. Not because of tears, but because of an itch. Oh god, the synchronization has started. 
Oh no, this isn't good. Like hell I am, why would I cry over you? It's just, she's saying such stupid things. It makes me so angry that my emotions are going crazy. Anyway, we'll continue searching for this vampire, okay? If we can defeat this Roa guy, then you can get some rest. Then everything's solved. There aren't any problems at all. With terribly peaceful eyes, she gives a quiet nod. But it's too late for me, Shiki. You said I held myself back before, but I really didn't. Back then, I only stopped because you became afraid of me. Many people have been afraid of me like a monster, so I didn't feel anything. I don't. I didn't feel anything when hated or feared. But it really is strange, you know? I really didn't want you to look at me like I was a monster. But I am a monster no matter how you look at me. <laughs> she forces out a dry laugh. No, it just happened so fast I was surprised. That's a lie. That's a lie I can't even fool myself with. Arkwood painfully looks away. Since they told me before that you'll only hurt the other person when you tell lies that you can't even deceive yourself with. That's why I stopped for an instant. I was scared of you looking at me like that. I would break apart if you looked at me like that in the future, too. So I won't see you anymore. What? Let's say goodbye here, Shiki. We've probably associated too much with each other. She turns around swiftly. She says this while trying not to look at me. Associated too much, huh? Well, maybe that's true. For both me and Arkwid. If we never knew each other, this never would have happened. I would have just returned to my normal life and she would have probably kept going by herself. You're right. Maybe we have associated too much already. But I think we're fine like that. Because isn't always being by yourself lonely? Arkwood doesn't answer. She looks so vulnerable. I want to embrace her and support her. And to be honest, I really enjoyed these past few days. I almost died, but it wasn't all bad. So let me help you until the very end. How could I sleep if I knew I left you alone? No. You don't have to worry about me. I will kill Roa no matter what. I will destroy him even if it kills me. You've done enough already, Shiki. The city will soon return to normal, so you don't have to worry anymore. Her voice, as she fades away from me, has no trace of her usual brightness. I can't bear this anymore. I'm going to stop acting like this, idiot. It's not what I'm worried about. Saying that, I drew, draw closer to her. We gotta give her a hug? Arkwood tries to escape. I grab her arm from behind and make her turn around. Shiki, since you don't understand me unless I'm direct, I'll be direct. Look, I didn't agree to help you to stop the vampire in this city. I really don't have any fine ideals such as protecting the city I live in. Right, I was only fooling myself. The reason isn't anywhere near to being that noble. I just... I just like you. I wanted to help you, so I agreed to help you. So now I just can't leave you. I reveal it all. And I embrace Arkwood straight on. <gasps> Huggies! Oh, her gasp isn't one of resistance. She simply stands there in astonishment, accepting my embrace. Hug oh, come on. Come on, hug C E or C G. Hug C G. Hug C G. Hug C G. Let's go, gamers. I want to see that nice hug. I want to see a warm embrace. Please, I beg of you. Oh. Okay, let's see. Thump. There's nothing wrong with you wanting to drink my blood. I've kink shamed for less. I mean, what? No. Thump. Shaky, it hurts. My arms hurt. Thump. That'll make it even, because I... Thump. I've always wanted you to... Oh. Even now, I'm consumed with passion just hearing your heartbeat. From her arms I hold, from her body up against mine, I can feel the beating of her heart. No, Shiki, that's just... For, for right now, it's only a whim of yours. Thump, thump. Just hearing this sound makes me want to hug her to death. Uh... I would be careful, bud, because you've actually, like, killed her before, so maybe don't hug her to death. Even so, if I love you right now, Arkwid, that is my truth. I don't care about what happens later. Thump. Or 
Do you hate me? Thump. The heartbeat skips. No. I can't answer that. The heartbeat stops in its place. Her arms wrap around my back like falling rain. At first just gently. Then hard as if answering me. Her arms squeeze my body into hers. No hugs? See? Aw, oh, come on. That... Gotta, gotta wait for the remake. Ah! Oh. Our embrace lasted only an instant. I don't know which of us separated first. But as if we planned it, we both let go. She blushes, looking away. There's only about an hour until dawn. As the night ends, so does Arkwood's time. But I can't bear parting with her anymore. If it can be forgiven right now, I want to... Again? No, my room. <laughs> uh, can we go... Buddy! Pal! If you say you're going to protect me, I don't want you to go back. Okay, is this going to be wholesome cuddle time? Because I'm okay with wholesome cuddle time. But if you guys start... If you guys start to do the do for a third time, second I guess technically, that, that, that's not good, a hesitant voice. If you can understand what she means. Nodding wordlessly. Oh no, she was saying her room. Okay, it's tough to tell. I walk with Arquid to her room. Swear to God. Oh boy, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I enter before her. Behind me, I can sense Arquid. If I turn around, I know my feelings will rise out of control. But still, my mind is almost surprisingly calm. I don't quite understand by myself, but perhaps it is the contradicting impulse of being insane yet sane that loving someone brings. Arquid, I try to turn around. Before I finish, I feel her hand lightly rest on my back. Don't turn around. Wait just like this for a while. She's gonna turn around and be naked! Her voice is exceedingly calm. The hand on my back doesn't move, as if making sure of something. Hey, Shiki. Do you remember when I first waited for you? Yeah, I remember. The one I killed was waiting with a smiling face. How could I forget? Yeah, back then I really hated you. Despite her words, her voice is very gentle. Arquid? I knew I wouldn't be able to suppress my vampiric impulses by myself any longer, and I knew this would probably be my chance, and I pursued Roa. I thought I finally found him, and then someone I didn't even know killed me and ruined everything. Back then, all I could feel was hatred. And then I found the one who killed me and waited at that road for such a long time. I was thinking for you to hurry up. Hurry up and come here. Once I saw you, I'd make you suffer the same fate. I really did hate you. I hated you so much I thought my chest would burst with hatred as I waited. The pressure on my back increases. Ar... Kuen? But... No one has ever killed me like that before. I was a bit curious about what kind of person you were, too, and I never thought so strongly about someone before. In the beginning, it was just hatred, but it started to slip when I wondered what kind of human you were. Soon, I wanted to meet you to find out about you. The one who killed me like that, and for the first time, I almost lost track of myself, and I kept wondering. Shiki, what you said before, about how being by yourself is lonely, I thought that wasn't true, but when I waited for you, the one who I madly thought about, I felt happy. I wanted to meet you right away, but it turned out great that I held on and waited for you. It was really fun. I was so excited. I kept imagining what kind of person you were. She pulls her hand from my back. I... Thinking back, I started to feel the need for someone else from that time, and I felt unsatisfied with just being by myself. You said you liked me, but I think I fell in love with you before we even met. Yo, yo gamers, we're in there. Her voice is just so lovely. Oh, thank you. There's no need for hesitation. Turning around, I embrace her. I'm terrified to click and see her naked. Oh, that's okay. We could show that. Just a little smoochy. Our lips come together naturally. I don't know who started it. Maybe we both did. We just did it gently. We kissed to feel each other's presence, 
just a bit closer. Ah. Holding my breath, I take in everything about the way she feels. Her soft lips, the skin that would never touch anything, is touching me right now. Just thinking about it makes my head spin, yet touching her is so warm and relaxing. I am so terrified for someone to walk in on me reading this out loud. Well, at least it's not some other stuff, but her body is trembling lightly, but she doesn't seem to be scared at all. Her closed eyes, the shade of red on her cheeks is so adorable. I really can't believe it. This Arquid is the one I love so much. On this route. I couldn't even imagine that doing this would make me feel more love toward her. We pull back, still holding each other, and we look at each other in embarrassment. That was a kiss, wasn't it? She says this with a deep blush. Her red eyes look up at me imploringly, her golden hair waving before my eyes. Argument, you don't like this kind of thing? Well, that's not it. My heart's beating fast right now. Thump. Certainly, her heart is beating loudly. Or is it my heartbeat? She looks straight into my eyes. But this is troubling. I'm wondering if this is really okay. Was well, what okay? Because there aren't any vampires that kiss. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. There are a surprising number that do. You'd be, you'd be shocked. Blushing, she smiles embarrassedly. The gesture was checkmate. Taking off my glasses, I embrace her once more. Okay, well, that went from cute to sexual. So we will see you guys in a little bit. Because here we go. Whoa! There we go. We're back. All right. This time we're switching things up and we're trying out Ark because she's the one that asked us to, uh, to, to, to come and visit. So I think that just makes sense, you know? Oh, air combos, baby. All right. Well, okay. I did a super even though I didn't mean to. Also, they went back to the park. Oh my God. What, what is that kick there? Oh my God. Oh my God. You can, her heavy, her heavy, heavy leads into stuff. That's rad. Okay, so she has like a flash step. Okay. That's rad. Alright. Just gotta, just gotta smack out the knees. The knees are the weak point. The knee spot, as they call it. Okay, I wonder if I can... Okay. There is a universal, like guard button like there is a parry button like that there which was rad that i was able to do the use there okay rad she has a double jump too okay trying to trying to do some cool here Come on. I want to be cool. Like that. There we go. You got to finish well, boys. Right? Am I right? Am I right, gamers? Voy. Voy. Voy indeed. Well... Let's, uh, see you after they have their, uh, little intimate moment. And, and we're back. That was rough. As usual, let me give you a few of the highlights that I've saved and sent to my Discord for their, uh, viewing pleasure. Uh, one, we have the phrase, as naturally as if she was taking off a hat, Arkwood removes her clothing, uh, the hat stays on. The hat stays on. The phrase luscious mounds? That's embarrassing. Um, crude sword. Don't know about that one, Chief. At one point, he's like, This feels weird. Are my damn are my nerves damaged? That's not healthy. 
Um, at one point, there's the feeling of something tearing like paper. Now, I'm no body expert, but that sounds bad. Um, her well-shaped eyebrows contort in anguish. You're looking at her eyebrows, bud? All right, well, seems to be good now. We seem to be safe. I hope that's the case. Anyways, only the sounds of our breathing echo through the moonlit room. Arkwid's glistening body lies next to mine, a thin line of blood on her thigh. Yeah, by the way, there was bleeding. There was blood. We lie there panting. The results of her first time. She must really be worn out. I try and catch my breath. But for me, even after... Maybe I should have skipped a bit more ahead. Even after doing that much and pushing myself past the limit like that, it still isn't... Oh. Is there more? The, the ecstasy was more than enough, but my mind is still wanting to hold her even more. Is there more? Okay, there's more, I guess. Alright, time for the salty run back, because he's doing it... He's doing it again, so let's just try and, uh... Try and have ourselves a good time there. Oh, there we go. We got air combos going. Oh, yeah. I'm starting to feel this. It's a bit of a weird dizzy, because she's very clearly moving. Very nice. We got that. Round one done. Let's hopefully we don't beat that round two so fast this time, like last time. Yeah, that's a throw. I'm trying other moves out. Do we, did he have a Shoryuken? I saw it in the other fight. Yep. That's his quarter circle. Okay. Come on. I want to do something cool. Do you have any aerial moves? Okay. I missed. That was sick, though. There we go. All right. We do it. We do it. Video games are good. Anyways, let's go back. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't keep going. Boy, this happens a lot more than in Fate. I'll say that for sure. Okay. I think we're done here. I hope we're done here. This one was cuter. It was actually like... It started with, there was some hugging, there was some kissing. It was like, actually not bad. But let me bring up some of the lines that I read that were that were still hilarious. Um, let's see here. Um, I place my hands on her well-shaped ass. Just goes in for that, huh? Um, he uses the phrase smooth entry, which makes it sound like he's landing an airplane, which is hilarious, making airplane noises. Um, apparently... Her healing ability means that butt stuff doesn't hurt? That's weird. Um, pumping her tunnel. Now, here's the one that gets me. There's two things here. The, this is where it starts to get whack. He says, this might be the most destructive thing I've ever done. You killed her. You cut her into 16 pieces, bud. This is the most destructive thing? I don't know about that, Chief. Also, he licks her spine. He licks her sweaty spine. It's a bit weird. Um, he then yells, slide, slide, slide. Don't know about that. Anyways, 
Her eyes are closed. With tears still trickling down her fully satisfied face, she falls asleep. I hope so. We good? Oh man, I'm spent. I look down as I breathe heavily. She's breathing peacefully as she sleeps. <sighs> Start to feel a little embarrassed thinking back on it. Yeah, well, you feel embarrassed thinking those thoughts? Imagine having to read those. I feel no regrets over having sex with her. Well, maybe just a little. I wanted to be a bit calmer so that I could have enjoyed more of the sensation of her skin and the look of her embarrassed expression. Oh yeah, that's another thing. She was like, please be gentle with me. And he's like, he actually yells, shut up and throws her. And it's like, bro, you can't just hold forward and press heavy punch while it's beautiful, lovely scenes. I guess I still can't. I'm doing my best only keeping up with her. Actually, I'm not sure a day will come where I can be calm about Arquid's body. Even today, I don't remember much about what I did. All I can remember is how good it felt. If tiredness is any indication of how it was, I'm so exhausted I can't even walk now. Happy International Women's Day. Hwa! Stifling a yawn, I look down at her sleeping face. I really do love her. She answered my selfish love. It might be a different form of love I'm feeling, but Arkwood needs me too. Just that. Just that makes me extremely happy. Not the fact that I'm needed, but for her, who is until now always alone, for her to need someone else makes me happy. And you know, with this, you're not alone anymore, Arkwood. Everything starts to sway a little. It seems I'm getting sleepy too. Lying down on my back next to her, I take a deep breath. Like that, I sink into a deep sleep. In the midst of a deep sleep, I have a dream where Arkwood wakes up before me and is doing something terrible. Arkwood is rustling about by herself. What are you doing? I ask. Oh, you're awake, Shiki. Well, not really. I'm, I'm more asleep than awake. Thanks to my body isn't quite doing what I tell it to. I see. I'm flattered, but it's a bit embarrassing. Arkwood smiles like a little girl. I think it's strange for me to know how she looks like... When I have my eyes closed, but since she looks happy, I decide to ignore such a trivial thing. Hey, Shiki? What is it? You must be tired, too, so you should sleep until nighttime. What if... What if I become a true vampire? What would you do, Shiki? Ah, well, such a strange question. Ah, but that wouldn't happen. That wouldn't happen. Pusha, right? Pusha. Because you're afraid of drinking blood, right? That's why it's a what-if question. It's only natural to steal others' lives to preserve your own in nature, right? So it's just a story of what if I became that, like that. Uh, cut it out. That will never happen, and I don't like talking about what-ifs. Didn't I say that before? Really? I like what-ifs, not knowing how things will turn out, yet still having hope at least for that moment. That's right, you said something like that before too, Arkwood. Yeah, so I was wondering... What I would have done if you were a horrible person. Arquid? I love you, Shiki. You let me feel this way and enabled me to tell you like this. You really were kind to me. Why? Why is Arquid crying? Well, Shiki, I'll be leaving before you wake up. Oh, dang! I won't be able to say goodbye directly, so forgive me for doing it this way. The sound of a door shutting. Still sleeping, I hear it close. Oh, no! Oh, this sucks. This is the worst morning after. Hmm, I wake up. Bright sunlight streams in through the curtains. Looking at the clock, it just turned noon. Ah, oh, crap, school! I quickly get up, but come to think of it, it's Sunday today. There's no need to go to school. The only thing I should worry about is the fact that I stayed over at Arkwood's place without calling home. Come to think of it, I saw a weird dream. A dream where I was talking to Arkwood, and she kissed me at the end. Ah, <sighs> I'm really out of it. For me to see such a happy dream, when Arkwood is sleeping next to me might be proof that I'm really happy right now, though. Don't you think so, Art? I turn to the bed. And my voice cuts off there. Arkwood? I look at the bed in shock. There's no one there. Arkwood isn't around anywhere. I'll be going now. In my dream, Arkwood said that. Hey, wait. I look around the room. But of course she isn't anywhere. 
The only thing I find is a single piece of paper on the table. I don't know if this is some kind of joke or it's in another language, but the paper only has the word buy written on it. Why? I don't want to believe it. But more than that, I can understand what Arkwood did. Why? You gotta be kidding me. Buy is just too simple. We even promised. We promised to be together. I told her I'd help her until the very end. Why? Why did she go off by herself again? Why, Arkwood? I scream as loud as I can as I crumple the paper. You're tearing me apart, Arkwood! I'm fed up with this world. Well, dang, man. After that, I'd fly out of the room and look all over like I've gone mad. I can't find Arquid. I know. I already know that she won't appear before me ever again. But I still can't give up. I'll go crazy like this. I'll go crazy unless I can find her and yell at her for how much of an idiot she's been. But I still can't find her. I'll never see her again. Something desperately ends. She will settle things with Roa and disappear by herself. No. I think she's already finished and left the city already. I stop thinking before I go crazy. I hear voices of cicadas in the back of my ear. The discarded shells of cicadas. My body becomes light with nothing inside it. And I cannot think anymore. So this is what it means to be truly empty. Not even tears come forth. Still an empty shell, my legs move. I guess it's like an animal's instinctual sense to go home. Even though I have nothing left in me, I'm walking towards my house. Savage Night. Okay. This almost sounds like a bad end chapter. I hope it's not. I wake to the sound of Hisui's voice. Since then, after returning to the mansion, I must have made my way to my room somehow and slept. Shiki-sama, are you not feeling well? No, I'm fine. Answering, I sit up in bed. I'm almost amazed at myself. I don't even feel like talking, but my body tries to start my day as always. Breakfast? I'll be down soon. Yes, I will be waiting. Looking as if she still wants to say something, Hisui then leaves the room. I change my clothes and head to the sitting room. Akiha and Kohaku are there. Morning. Giving my usual greeting, I go to the dining room. I eat breakfast and return to the sitting room. I sit on the sofa and stare at the clock. N Nissan? Uh, you know you have school today, right? Huh? Yeah, that's... That's right. I guess I should go to school. I forgot. I didn't feel like doing anything, and I thought I would keep living like this empty shell. I do have my life as Tono Shiki. If I don't have anything to do, it won't hurt to go to school. Nisan? Akiha looks at me uneasily. Speaking is just a pain. Without saying anything, I go to school. Sucks, man. I've been in, I've actually been in the situation before where you like something you thought was going to be this amazing thing for the rest of your life is lost and you just feel so empty and the dreams don't stop the dreams of that future you really wanted they don't stop but it just won't happen and you have to accept that it sucks it hurts. It, it's a real kind of empty that takes time, a lot of time to heal. And who knows, maybe it'll never actually heal. Oh, God. That was real. That wasn't a bit, by the way. That, like, that, I, those of you who are probably like, oh, he's going to say something about, like, Saber. No. No, I'm being for real. It's tough. So, I'm feeling sympathetic. I am. I know exactly how he feels. Even the instinctual going home part. Just where you feel so numb, all you can do is walk. Anyways, 
Time passes by uneventfully. I emptily attend my classes. Sound of the chalk. I mindlessly write down what's on the board. Since my notes. I look out the window into the rear courtyard. Of course, there's no one there. What am I doing? Just calmly attending my lessons like this. I'm not searching for her and just returning to my normal life. But there's no way for me to search for Arquid. Since she left on her own, there's no possibly, probably no possibility of me finding her. That's why I've really lost Arquid. Snap? The sound comes from above my desk. Ah, it's nothing. I was just gripping my mechanical pencil so hard I snapped another one. Mechanical? A mechanical pencil? Those are pretty tough to break, my dude. Those, those, that's not just a regular pencil. Classes end. In the commotion of the classroom, I still remain seated. Tono, can you come here for a moment? My math teacher speaks up from the podium. Yeah, what is it? I respond and walk towards him. Tono, hasn't your recent behavior been a little wild? I received information that you've been going out late at night. Does it ring a bell? Yes. These past few days, I had things to do in town at night. I see. My math teacher, well, my homeroom teacher as well, looks a bit concerned, then looks a little sorry. I know you're not the kind of student to goof off at night, but there have been concerns voiced by the faculty. It appears the head of the student council would like to speak to you. Because of that, please go to the student council room after school. Huh, I wonder who that is. Just consider yourself unlucky and bear with it. Saying goodbye, he leaves the classroom. That, yeah, that's a student council room, all right. After school, I stop by the student council room, but the teacher isn't there. I remember the teacher's also an advisor to the gymnastics team. He probably won't come until practice is over. I sit in my chair and wait faithfully. Bite my lip. I know this isn't the time to be doing this. I know, but there's nothing I can do. Outside the window, the sunset paints the sky vermilion. I can hear the voice of club members practicing outside and the students talking while going home. Within that, this classroom is the only quiet place. This makes me angry. Why am I here? I can't do anything. I'm angry at my powerlessness. However, I have no way to solve this myself, so in the end, all I can do is accept everything I'm told emptily. What am I doing? There's no answer. I just sit in the empty classroom, listening to the sounds outside. Dang. Tick. Second out of the clock sweeps by. Telling me it's now seven at night? You stay till seven? Buddy. That's rough. No one comes by. The school closes at six. All the teachers leave at 6.30, so no one else remains on the school grounds. I guess I'm forgotten. I get up from my chair. After pondering matters so long, my head starts to clear a little. I was thinking all this time about what I should do, what I should prioritize. From here I should... Oh. Okay, so here's my thought. Arc we won't find Arkwood. By looking for her. Going to the mansion will be nothing. But she's going to be looking for Roa. We need to be reckless. We need to go where she would go. And that's where Roa is. So let's go. I should find this vampire Roa. Arkwood isn't going to come to see me, and it's almost impossible for me to find her. So I'll take the opposite route. Arkwood said she would defeat Roa no matter what. If her purpose is Roa... Then I'll look for him, too. Arkwood will come to Roa. If I could find him before then, that'll be good. And with that option, I can help Arkwood at the last moment. All right. My mind is set, so I can't waste any more time here. I have to go into town this very minute. If it means looking for a needle in a haystack, I have to find this vampire. Naturally, the hallway's empty. Lights are shut off and the hallway is illuminated solely by the blue moonlight streaming in from the windows. I realize as I look at the sky in the hallway, 
Tonight is a full moon. I lose myself for a moment gazing at it. A silver moon, delicate beauty like glass. Feels like it will crumble if I were to reach out my hand and touch it. That moon, when I was a child, I feel like I saw it in a stupor. Uh, suddenly, the scar on my chest begins to ache. My heart skips a beat. My blood starts to circulate wildly, and I can't control my breathing. I place my hand on my chest. My uniform is soaked in blood. My scar is opened and is bleeding. Panting. My breathing's out of control. A chill runs through my back, and my spine painfully feels like it's up or going to burst open. Oh boy. Oh, tap? That's someone. In between my heartbeats, I hear a sound. Ah... Uh... Ah, who is it? I'm scared. Someone is coming from the far end of the hallway, walking towards me. Tap the sound of footsteps. There's something's not right. This isn't the wild beating of my heart, which comes from my body sensing danger like before. A headache runs through my head. This pain, the sense of danger is direct against me. I feel that shadowy figure is something I, Tonoshiki, must not meet. I breathe harder. Not able to breathe properly, I take off my glasses. My knife is in my pocket. The figure draws closer. The moonlight seems to suggest it's a male. The point indicating death pulsates in the center of his body like a heart. All around his body are numerous lines of death covered like wires for a machine. My breathing stops. There's something wrong with my head. I don't know this figure. Even though I don't know, I can't help but feel it resembles someone. He approaches. I'll be able to see his face soon. Who does he resemble? Who does he resemble? Who does he resemble? Who does he resemble? Who am I forgetting? Ah, there he is. Bloodshot eyes. The death all over his body. An alien stillness in the very air around us was frozen. There's no mistaking it. He isn't human. He draws even closer. He heads straight in my direction, looking solely at me, smiling wordlessly. I ready my knife. The blade pops forth. He continues walking. There's no time to think or hesitate. Under the white moon! As if in slow motion, I ready my knife. He doesn't stop. Slowly, as if time stopped only for me, he easily reaches out and takes my knife, holding it upside down. What? My body doesn't move. Shiki. Being able to see death isn't just your privilege. Saying that, he moves his arm. A chill runs through me again. My brain freezes. My body remembers the same pain from before. Yeah! The sound of slashed flesh. My knife he stole is now plunged deeply in my chest. My body collapses. All my strength drains as I crumble to the floor. Fluttering, a white sheet falls. It's because I leaned on him when I fell. As I fell, my hand took the bandages wrapping his body. I see. You wish to see my face, Shiki? Saying that, he unfurls the bandages. Everything turns dark. His face. His face before me, I know it. Do you? Oh! Okay. Well, there goes some of my theories about that. It does resemble that. Because his face... It resembles the face of the bloody child before me on that hot summer day. I fall into the ground, the knife still embedded in my chest. Strangely, there's no blood or even pain. My body just gets colder. My consciousness drifts away. My control over my body. Everything starts to fade away. I did pay you back for killing me. He says this as he looks down at me. The face I see as I look up. I recognize him. Of course I recognize him. Yeah, why have I forgotten until now? When I was a kid, the other child me and Akiha played with at the mansion. Always. Always we were together. When Akiha came to play, me and him were always there to welcome her, so... Why have I forgotten his name until now? Shiki. That's right, Shiki. It's really been a long time. That's capital, Shiki? Is that capital, Shiki? I thought you were... 
I thought this dude was Michael. Was this dude? Was this? What? What? what uh, are you not Roa? He, Shiki, smiles with satisfaction. I thought this dude was Michael Roa Valdamyong. Shiki, Shiki, Akiha, Shiki, Shiki, Akiha, Shiki. Those meaningless scribbles. That's ridiculous. Or sorry, that's ridiculous. Sorry, Shiki. You'll have to listen to my grudges just a little lot longer, so I just avoided the point of death slightly. It's not fatal, so you'll probably stay conscious for a bit. Don't fade away that easy. That unpleasant laugh and that terrible uneasiness I felt when I faced Nero. In the midst of my fading consciousness, I realized something. He is Arkwood's enemy. Well then, shall I take that knife? Someone like you who's about to disappear won't need it. He reaches for the knife stuck in my chest. He grips the handle. The moment he takes it out will be my death. But I can't do anything. I can't move even to close my eyes. Yeah, he flies. Suddenly, Shiki flies back as if struck by a car. At the same time, a black-robed figure appears. Even though this is the third floor, she crashes through the glass window and makes a flashy appearance. <laughs> I'm flying back many meters. Shiki stands... Oh god, that's confusing. Let's call him Shiki. We'll go Shiki for him, just to make things less confusing. Shiki stands up slowly and stares at me lying on the floor. And CL Senpai protecting me. Bitch. Interfering once and now twice. Senpai only stares back wordlessly at Shiki. He lowers himself, as if to attack Senpai. And then, as if realizing something, Shiki begins to laugh. <laughs> I see, that's how it is, woman. I can't believe it, but that's how it is. Oh, interesting. This is the first time such a thing has happened in 800 years. If that's the case, then new things truly do await me. Shiki continues to laugh from the bottom of his heart. Senpai merely stares at the vampire in front of her. What is it? Have you come to kill me, right? Or is it something else? Or is it that... A cast-off shell cannot do anything on its own. Senpai doesn't respond. She looks away from the vampire and lifts me up. Oh. That imposter is more important than cutting off the cause behind you? But that's useless. He's beyond help. It's only payback for him living as Tono Shiki until now. No matter what, there's no healing someone who, whose lines of death are cut. Even that princess had to exchange 800 years of time in order to regenerate. A human like him can't escape death. His voice is full of mocking laughter. Senpai doesn't say anything in response. In the end, without a single word, as she holds me, she goes through the glass window and jumps outside. She seems to treat the height as if it were nothing. With a light step, she lands on the ground and runs from the school without even looking back. Through it all, I look only at the school building with empty eyes. The third floor hallway I was just in until now. I blankly look at the vampire with long black hair as he viciously watches us leave. There's a lot that just happened that I'm trying to wrap my brain around. So, okay. Alright, so. There was Shiki and Shiki. He called us a discarded shell, though, so what's with that? I still have questions, for sure. We'll have to see. So, is Roa, then... So is this guy simultaneously Shiki, whose name I will keep saying as a way to differentiate it, um, and Roa, where it's like he was born Shiki and then gained the persona of Roa Lair, or is there something else? I don't know. I truly, truly, truly don't know. All right, guys. Well, then, in that case, we're going to call it here, uh, because I'm going to need to do a lot of editing this part for obvious reasons. Um, but, oh boy, the plot thickens indeed. 
So until we see you next time, uh, keep it in mind and, 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 and keep on thinking of ideas with what, what it is. Because don't tell me. Don't tell me. I don't want spoilers. I'm actually like learning as it goes on. Because here's the thing. I had that I had a similar plot point to another Nasuverse thing completely spoiled for me. And I knew it from like day one. Or did I? Wait, no, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. No. I didn't know I, I came up with it on my own. Anyways, that's for some reason I thought I did, but now I'm thinking back, I'm like, no, I totally didn't. So, um, but, but, but what I'm trying to say is I'm learning legitimate new things from this. And that's like Mundo cool. Like I'm getting, I'm letting the story naturally come in and it's like, oh, the twists, they're so good. So anyways, I'll see you guys next time for some more. Let's read Tsukihime. Ciao.